Hello world, my name is David Oze, and in this channel, we talk about how to create and integrate APIs so you can improve your existing applications. Today, we will talk about MTN Momo, which is also known as um, MTN Mobile Money. It's a payment system which provides us with some APIs that we can use to implement some payment system inside our application. We can accept payments, we can send some funds to multiple users, and we have some products available in the Momo API. So the first thing that we want to look at uh, is our discussion points, and definitely we're going to talk about the products which are available inside the Momo list of services with the sandbox environment, the key concept that we need to know that we need to be familiar with when working with this API. We will also talk about the API integration process, then jump into the documentation to find out some more stuff about this API. And in the list of products that we have available, which are kind of services that we have available using this, uh, you know, M10 Momo payment uh, service, we have the collection API, which is used to accept payments from uh, customers inside our application. We can use the disbursement um, API in order to, you know, automatically deposit some funds to multiple mobile money users just in one single transaction. We have the collection widget, which is quite uh, similar to the collection. And we are provided here with a QR code allowing our customers to just you know, scan some QR code and make payments. With the remittances, we can uh, remit some funds to you know, users who are located in a designated location. So all these are the products and the services that we can use in order to you know, implement this uh, API inside our application according to the need and features of our application. Next, we want to talk about the sandbox and the first thing that i would like to mention is that there is a difference between the production environment and the development environment as you can see in the, in the pictures in the development environment the workflow is going to be quite different because here we need to create some api user we need to create some api key and then generate a token which we do not do in the production environment because we are already provided with some uh, API key. We are already provided with some uh, token that we can use in order to make uh, safe uh, requests. So something we need to note down, the workflow is going to be different because what's happening here is that we are provided with some environment that we can use in order to test the application, in order to understand how it works, and then once we are ready, we can jump into the production environment. So a sandbox is basically, is basically a virtual machine. You can uh, install a sandbox, you can install a virtual machine on your system and, you know, play uh, with the virtual machine without affecting your main system. So this is just the idea about the sandbox here. And that's the reason why we need to do some setup. We need to create some API user, some API key before getting to make, you know, uh, our first request working with the API. So that's really good to know before getting, uh, getting started. And what we may also need to get familiar with are the key concepts. And we have some X reference ID. We have the X target environment. OCP subscription key, we have the X callback URL. All these are going to be our request headers variables. We need to mention this information when making some requests. So this is going to be very important to understand how to use and when to use. And the first thing that we may need to understand here is that the X reference ID is going to be a UUID. So that UID is going to be used when creating an API user. So our API user is just going to be a random UID that we can even generate online. The request ID as well is going to be a UID. And this will be used especially when we make requests like uh, get payment status or request to pay. We need to you know, specify some 
uh, request ID so that we tell the server, okay, tell me the status of the payment having this uh, ID or UUID. Then we have the X target environment, which is going to be sandbox in our case, since we are in the development environment. So we may have some different values when uh, working in production. And here the OCP subscription key is just going to be the primary key or the secondary key that we get when creating our account on the platform. Then the X callback URL is going to be some HTTP uh, URL that we need to provide uh, when making requests. But something we need to um, note is that when working in the sandbox, we are, are not we are not allowed to provide uh, any HTTPS endpoint. We should provide only uh, HTTP. So, which is quite um, difficult to handle because uh, it's not easy to find a callback a service online providing HTTP endpoints. Most of them provide HTTPS. And to solve this issue, we have the get request, like get status, uh, which we can use to kind of get the status of the payment. Uh, instead of getting, uh, you know, setting a callback, we can just make a get request uh, when needed, when required, in order to, you know, ask some, uh, for example, the, the status of the payment. We can send our own request to the server in order to have that information rather than waiting for the server to inform us uh, with some callback that we need to set up instead of using you know a callback something we're going to look at also in the in the documentation and when talking up the basic auth and the bearer token the status code this is something you may look at uh, in my previous videos because i've already discussed these two and the next point will be the the api integration process so the first thing we need to to do here in the api integration is that we need to sign up we need to create an account and then we will be able to subscribe to the product of our choice after that we can manage our subscription just by creating or generating some primary key or secondary key then after that we will be able by using some api a testing tool like postman we can generate an API user, we can generate uh, our API key, and later on generate our token. So that being said, we can then jump into the documentation where we're going to have some more information. So in the website here, we can just click on documentation and see what we have. So right in the introduction it says the purpose of the site is to detail the design principles object behavior and error handling uh, for the mtn mobile money and this is very important when working with an api you kind of need to know what's the design principle of that api what's the object the behaviors and especially the error handling which is very important so that you know what to expect in case anything goes wrong and the good news is that we're using the REST architectural style here, something we like in this channel. We have the use ISO international here, currency and country code, something you may also need to you know, keep in mind when working with the API. You have this uh, feature that I like a lot because you can check if a mobile number has a mobile money account so this is something you may need to know or need to do need to implement in production before making any requests you know you may need to check if that mobile number is registered or has a mobile money account so this is something i find uh, i find quite uh, interesting and we have the get started something we've already seen in the presentation so these are all the steps that we need to follow and the API user and API key is something I want us to discuss in the next video where we're going to see how to generate uh, our API user, or how to generate our API key and how to authenticate ourselves before making our very first request. So the use cases are going to be like the request to pay here that I want us to discuss a bit. 
And the first request that we're going to make when um, working with this, so the request to pay service is used for requesting a payment from a customer. So to do this, we need to send a POST request to this endpoint, request to pay. We shall have the status code 202 as a response without any response body. And the user is actually going to be notified of this request to confirm a payment. And if we've set some callback URL, we're going to you know, have some payload uh, coming from the API or coming from the user. Uh, with some data inside our, you know, um, through our callback URL. So in case we have not provided uh, any callback URL, we have this alternative, which I mentioned earlier, you can send a GET request with the reference ID in order to kind of know the status of the payment or what, which action the user took, uh, did he accept the payment? Did he reject it? So that's something we can check by sending this get request to pay, specifying the request ID. And if that's impending, for example, we can have the 200 status code with the status of the payment pending. So we have some more use cases down the page here, but for now, I just want us to stick to this. And in the coming videos, we can discuss the other use cases uh, in details. We also want to take a look at the sandbox use case here, which is just what we need to do, you know, generate the token. And in addition to that, we have some numbers provided here. If you want to test something like a request to pay failed, if you want to simulate this action, we can use this number. We can use uh, this one for rejected and so on. So always good to have that in mind so that you can always come back to the documentation and take a look at all this information. We can also take a look at the common error codes. So when making some requests, we may encounter some status code like this. So we need to know um, the meaning of those, you know, uh, status codes or error codes. And in that case, you may need to come here and kind of read uh, 401 is for access denied due to invalid subscription key. So always good to know that we have this in the documentation. You may also need to check the callback in case you want to have more information on how it works on Sandbox, how it works on production. And this is something I've mentioned earlier. We have to use only HTTP when working in the development environment, which is Sandbox. Or the HTTPS is not going to be accepted. But in production, we do have this uh, ability of adding this HTTPS endpoint right here. So uh, something we may also need to check is the support in case you need some assistance, in case you want some uh, help from the community. You can choose your country. Let's go with Ghana, for example, here. We can click on, you know, WhatsApp to you know, kind of keep in touch with any community. You have the FAQ uh, S that I also like, where you can find uh, some, you know, summary on authentication, for example, or how to set up your callback. So it's something you may also need to check here. And that's pretty much what we need to know uh, before, you know, starting to work with this API, getting used to all the concepts, you know, all the workflow, uh, using the sandbox, what to do, what not to do, what to know before. And that being said, that's all for me, and I'll see you in the next one.